Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tim and I'm going to show you something very special. Hobbies are the things that keep us busy when there's no work to be done. And this has been my hobby for the last little bit. Eventually it will be a massive fight scene covering the entire wall, but that will take some time. Each character is made one by one, very simply, with a little bit of cork, a little bit of cardboard, and some paint thrown over top for good measure. And today, I'm going to show you how to make them. The first thing you want to do is watch this video all the way through before attempting to dive in. The temptation will be to just grab everything and work right alongside me, but we're dealing with very sharp objects and careful paintwork with this project, so a little bit of planning goes a very long way. Watch the video first, understand the instructions, and then you can go back and watch it again and work with me if you need to. Now, with that little disclaimer, let's begin. For the purpose of this video, I picked three different size sprites to show you how easily this method can be adapted to whatever you need. Our first item is the red shield from A Link to the Past, and since it's a nice 12 by 12 pixel image, our 1 foot by 1 foot cork squares really work nice and easy for that. Second, we'll mess up our nice and neat measurements with a 16 by 16 question block from Super Mario World, and then finally we'll ramp up the difficulty a lot to a 60 by 33 image of a space pirate. You know, the ones from Super Metroid, because I think it will look really wicked right there in that corner. Now that you know what you're going to make, you can gather your materials. It's handy to start by making a list of colors you'll need for each particular character. This way you'll know going into your local hobby store slash Walmart exactly what paints you'll need to buy. Here is my set, along with a mixing container, brushes, and a full range of colors so I can get almost any shade that I need. Next, you'll need a black pen and Sharpie along with a ruler of some kind to measure and mark your grid. I've found that an architect's ruler works best for this if you can find one. It has multiple intervals already denoted on the ruler, so most of the math is already done for you. You'll also need the one foot by one foot court squares themselves, another craft store slash Walmart purchase for about five to seven dollars per four pack. And the final mostly optional step involves an X-Acto knife or other very sharp blade some wood glue, and a few sheets of cardboard or other stiff backing material. You'll notice the cork itself is rather flimsy, so affixing this board to the back of it gives it a bit of extra strength and helps it last a lot longer. So, now that we have everything we need, we're ready to begin. Start by marking lines all the way around the cork at the intervals you need. For our shield, the squares are one inch each. Our question block gets a mark every three quarters of an inch, because we need to fit 16 pixels into a 12 inch space and 12 divided by 16 gives us 0.75 inches per block. And our space pirate gets one every 0.1875 inches or 3 sixteenths. Once the markings are done you can go ahead and draw the rest of the grid. I find it easier to start a few lines in so you don't accidentally obscure your reference marks and then you can go back towards the end and fill them in. Then pull up your picture. If you're using in-game sprites Photoshop or any other photo editing software makes it very easy to zoom in and see the pixels. Using that as a reference, carefully trace the outline of your design. This will be the line you color inside, so make sure to include every part of the picture, including the borders on the inside. You will also make use of these lines as a reference as you paint, so making sure the shape is right now can save you a lot of headache later on. And now it's time to break out the paint. Start with the border and any outlines in the design. The shield and question block are simple enough, but the space pirate, you'll notice, has shades of dark green that make up the outline, giving it a bit more depth than a flat black would. As for coloring them in, our shield has four colors, red, gold, dark gold, and black. You can use a flat red, but I'm going to mix in a small drop of black to give it a slightly darker tinge. For the gold, adding a drop of brown to yellow gets it where we need, and then making another and adding a few more drops of brown darkens the hue enough for the outer edge. Now those are just my best judgments. You're more than welcome to use whatever mixing technique and color wheel you so choose to get whatever shades that you need. Our question block has five colors, white, black, yellow, and two shades of tan to create depth. And our space pirate is worst of all with four different shades of green, four different shades of purple, and this burnt sienna type color in the eyes that I think is really cool. Don't worry. Take your time, being very careful in those tiny squares. Work methodically. Start with one set of colors, let them dry, and then move on to the next one if you don't feel comfortable enough in tackling the whole thing at once. The important thing is the work is done correctly, 
not quickly. Once the paint is dried, you can use any remaining color to clean up any mistakes and then you're ready for cutting. Now you don't have to. You can paint the remaining area some other complementary color, frame the entire thing as it is, and hang it up. Or you can very, very carefully cut out your character using your X-Acto knife. This step comes with a huge warning. This can be rather tricky, especially in, say, our space pirate that has a lot of tiny nooks and crevices that require very deft turns of blade. So if you need assistance with this step, don't be afraid to ask for it. Work smartly, cutting out larger, unneeded areas before diving into the smaller details, making the remainder easier to work with. Remember that for cutting away excess, you don't have to follow the lines. So now that our figure is cut out, we just need to sturdy it up a bit. Trace out a section from your backing material just larger than your design. After you cut this part out, place your glue along the back of the cork, using a tool to help spread it evenly if you need, with special attention given to the edges. Press it onto the cardboard and leave it to dry, adding weight to the top if necessary. Once the glue is dried, you can cut out the remaining backing board and then you're mostly done. Unless you're feeling especially perfectionistic like me, in which case you can take the final product and go around the edges with an appropriate border color to give it that same depth from all sides. And that's about it. Everything you need to know to create your own cork board army. I love making these because not only does it stretch some creative muscles that I don't get to use very often, but let's face it, I can't draw for crap, so this may be the closest I actually get to being able to make art. Down below you'll find a list of all the materials as well as other resources that may be able to help you. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, as well as any other characters you think I might be able to use in my little collage. Now go, play with some paint. Thank you so much for watching everyone, and as always, we'll see you next time.